How are you all doing this morning? Pretty tired, not gonna lie. Cool deal. Well, we are gonna be talking about nodal analysis, which I mentioned on yesterday's class is an extraordinarily powerful circuit analysis tool. Um, so let's get to it. So what I'm going to describe to you today is a multi-step algorithm, really, or process for applying the nodal analysis technique, um, which will allow you to determine unknown voltages in pretty much any circuit you could be interested in using multiple instances of Kirchhoff's current law. So we're going to start with a fairly straightforward and easy circuit and then build from there. So our first circuit of interest is this guy, where we have a 10 amp current source. It is in parallel with an eight ohm resistor. Here we have a three ohm resistor. Here we have a four ohm resistor. And in parallel over here, we will have a two ohm source. So, our quantities of interest in this particular circuit will be this voltage, which I'm gonna call Vx, this voltage, which I'm gonna call Vy. And I wanna be clear here, Vx and Vy do not represent the same voltage because the eight ohm resistor and the four ohm resistor are absolutely not in parallel. And I also want to figure out look at this circuit. It's only got five elements in it, but we would be hard pressed to solve it using the analysis techniques that we know at this point. It would not be impossible, but it would definitely be difficult because none of the elements are connected in series and none of the elements are connected in parallel so there's literally no way that we can simplify this circuit down to anything so instead we are going to solve it using the nodal analysis technique our first step in employing nodal analysis step one is to identify our nodes and so I'm going to do this the exact same way that I did at the very first lecture that we had. And I'm just going to label my nodes with different colors. Um, so let's see. So I'm going to say that this is one node. This is a node, and this guy down here is also a node. So our circuit has exactly three nodes. So that is literally all that step one entails, okay? Nothing particularly hard and nothing that is remotely new. Step two is where something new comes in, okay? Step two, we need to select a reference node. Okay, so what this means is that we are going to assign 
one node a specific voltage, and that voltage is going to be zero volts. We're going to indicate this with a ground symbol. So what this allows us to do is we're saying, okay, so we are, we are assuming that this one particular node is at a fixed voltage, and we are then going to be able to find out all of the other voltages with respect to this node. I prefer to choose my reference or ground node to be the node um, that has the most amount of connections to it, which in this case would be our bottom most node. So I'm going to choose the bottom node as my reference, and I do that by attaching a ground symbol to it. So this is the schematic symbol for ground, which I misspelled ground. So let me fix that. Where ground is equal to zero volts, right? So it doesn't actually matter whether or not this potential in a true circuit were actually at zero volts um, because we're just going to be find everything with respect to this. And I'll explain what I mean by that in our next step. So step three means that we should be, or tells us to assign nodal voltages. So what I'm going to do is very simple, but the explanation for what it means is going to be a little bit more complicated, okay? I am going to call this red node node A. And so I'm going to say then that node A has a potential of VA with respect to ground. And I'm going to say that my green node has a potential of VB. That means that it is the nodal voltage at node B with respect to ground. So let me explain what these nodal voltages mean explicitly, okay? We know that a voltage is simply the difference in electric potential between two points in a circuit. So this nodal voltage A is effectively the positive polarity terminal, where ground is considered to be the negative polarity terminal. So VA is, by definition, since it's the positive polarity terminal, with ground as the negative polarity terminal, the exact same thing as Vx, which is what we're trying to solve for. And similarly, Vb is the exact same thing as Vy because it's positive polarity potential, uh, is at a uh, positive polarity terminal is at the green node and it's negative polarity terminal is at the blue node. So I can say, just to be super clear here, Va, is exactly equal to Vx, one of our quantities of interest, and Vb is exactly equal to Vy, one of our other quantities of interest. Does anybody have any questions about the assigning of nodal voltages and what they represent? By all means, if something is confusing or I've explained it poorly, please tell me so that we can work through it now. I think we're good for now. All righty. Only for now. Okay. Step four is to perform Kirchhoff's current law at each non-reference node. So if we perform KCL at node A, I'm going to be very explicit. I'm 
about what I'm doing here, all right? So using the convention that currents that are leaving node A are positive. So I'm gonna add this current direction down through my current source. I'm gonna add this current through my eight ohm resistor direction down. And I'm gonna add this current through my three ohm resistor together and set them equal to zero. So my current through my 10 amp source direction down is negative 10 amps. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. All right. My next term is my current through my eight ohm resistor. So let me explain exactly what I am doing here. I'm gonna apply Ohm's law, just as we would have done previously when we're trying to find the current through resistor, but I'm gonna do it in a very specific way. I'm gonna do the node where the current is, so close that, oh, I'm sorry. It selected something odd for whatever reason. So I'm gonna do the node where the current is originating from, which is node A. So I'm gonna have VA minus the node where the current ends up. So in this case, that would be minus ground or minus zero volts. And I'm gonna divide it by my resistor value of eight ohms. And I can do the exact same thing over the three ohm resistor. So the tail of my current is at node A and that current is flowing to node B. So I'll have VA minus VB, and I divide this by three ohms and so equal to zero. Uh, the program that I'm using is giving me a little bit of an error. So I need to save this, close it out, and then reopen it. So give me just a moment. I gotta find out where I just saved it. There we go. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Sorry, I can't make it. Um, not make that noise and still hear you guys. So I apologize. It's all good. I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. So here is my first equation. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions about where this comes from or how I got any part of it? Because being able to properly write these KCL equations is absolutely integral to applying nodal analysis. Would it be okay if we went over it one more time? I think I have it down, but I'd much rather go over it again to make sure. Sure. So the negative 10 amp part, um, I, I feel like that part's pretty straightforward. I drew my pink arrow as down, and we know that the 10 amps of current is flowing up. Those two currents are in opposite directions, which is why I got the negative 10 amps. Uh, for the current flowing through the 8 ohm resistor, the tail of the arrow is at node A, and that current is flowing from node A through the 8 ohm resistor to ground. So that's why it's VA minus our potential at ground, which is zero volts, divided by 8 ohms. That is just the application of Ohm's law, the voltage drop over the resistor divided by the resistor value gives us the current flowing through the resistor. Similarly, for the current flowing from left to right through the three ohm resistor, it starts at node A, flows through the three ohm resistor and ends at node B, which is why I have VA minus VB. And then I divide that by the resistor value of three ohms. I add those three currents together because I'm using Kirchhoff's current law and set them equal to zero. And so now I have one equation with two unknowns, VA and VB. So what I'll do next um, is I will write a KCL equation 
at node B. I'll draw the arrows for this guy in a different color. So the currents that are leaving node B are this guy directed to the left through the three ohm resistor, this guy directed down through the four ohm resistor, and this guy directed down through the two amp current source. So I'll simply express all three of those in terms of my nodal voltages, add them together, and set them equal to zero, exactly like I did with my previous equation. So the current flowing from right to left through the three ohm resistor is gonna be VB minus VA divided by three ohms. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. All right, my current flowing down through my four ohm resistor is gonna be VB minus zero, and I'm not gonna write minus zero anymore, divided by four ohms. And finally, my current flowing down through the two amp current source is negative two amps. And I set this guy equal to zero as well. So step five is to organize our equations. And this step is kind of skippable. Let me, and I'll explain what I mean by that. We are not going to be solving these guys by hand. We could using a method called, that does not say equations, that says quantities, sorry, um, Kramer's rule, which you guys learned in your pre-calculus class, uh, which I guess some of you learned it in high school or whatever then. Um, but that's just too much work for us. We, we're engineers, we have calculators for a reason. Um, so we don't necessarily have to organize equations if we know what to enter into our calculator. So that's what I'm gonna do in this organize equation step, all right? So if we look at equation one, I'm gonna be organizing the equations in the following form, all right? So I'm going to have some coefficient I'm going to call it C1 times my variable A1 plus coefficient 2, C2, times my variable uh, VB. is equal to C3, which is my constant term, okay? So if I look at my KCL at node A equation, I can see that I have a coefficient of one over eight ohms plus one over three ohms times my variable VA. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. Alrighty, now I have a coefficient of negative one over three ohms multiplied by my variable VB. Everybody groovy with that? Yes, sir. Finally, I have my constant term. So when I move that 10 amps to the other side of the equal sign, I will just have an amps over here. And so this is my first equation. And it represents KCL at node A. I can do a similar thing for my KCL equation at node B. Um, so my coefficient for, no, or for VA is negative one-third of an ohm, or one over three ohms, times VA, plus one over three ohms, plus one over four ohms, times VB is equal to 
to positive two amps. Here's equation two, representing KCL at node B. And now I know exactly what I need to be putting into my calculator. All right. So do you all know how to use your TI calculators and or Casio calculators and or HP calculators to solve systems of equations? but a refresher would not be opposed. All right, um, so to demonstrate how to do it is gonna be a little difficult um, because I can't literally show you, but I can kind of talk your way through it. So you asked for a bit of a refresher, so please tell me what type of calculator you have. Uh, Casio. All right. So the Casio is the one that I'm not as familiar with, but I think I should be able to figure it out pretty easily. Um, if you press the mode key. Oh, I think I got it. I think I remember. We did them a lot in static, so. So you I press the mode key and then you hit five to go to equation. And then you have four options. Uh, option one, is two equations, two unknowns, which is the system type we have. Option two is three equations, three unknowns. Um, option three is solving for a quadratic and option four is solving for a third order polynomial. So for this particular problem, we would press the mode key, then five and then one. And we get a little matrix having A, B and C where C represents coefficient three, uh, or I guess actually I should say A represents coefficient C1, B represents coefficient C2, and uh, C3, or C, C represents coefficient C3. And we can literally type in these little mathematical expressions without having to do any simplifications ourselves. Um, it's very, very similar on a TI calculator, um, except to get to the system solver, you just press second and then the tangent key. And you have an option for a two by two system or a three by three system. So regardless of what type of calculator you have, um, put in these coefficients and then tell me what the answers should be for VA and VB, please. Uh, for VA, I got... 41.6 and for VB I got 27.2. So 41.6 volts and VB you said you got 27.2. Same here. All right. Anybody else? Um, did anybody get anything different than this? Let's start there. All right, well, nobody's admitting they got anything different, and that's good because those are the correct answers for the nodal voltage at node A and the nodal voltage at node B. So we can easily say then that our voltage, let me look up here to make sure I'm defining it correctly, Vx, sorry, that looks terrible, the voltage drop over that, I believe it's an 8 ohm resistor, Yep, is 41.6 volts. And similarly, we can say that Vy, which is equal to Vb, is 27.2 volts. So my question to you guys then is how can we use this information to determine our current Iz? Any thoughts? Well, since you know VX, could you add up your uh, two resistors, three ohms and four ohms in series? And since they're gonna have the same current, could you solve it like that with the voltage over resistance? So I would argue that the three ohm resistor and the four ohm resistor don't have the same current flowing through them because they aren't in series. 
right? They can't be in series because while they do have that point of interconnection, which is the green node, there is a branching path on the green node that goes to the two amp source. So they aren't in series. So you guys don't know it yet, but we've actually already written an equation for that current IZ, all right? So let me explain what I mean. The current IZ is the current that's flowing through the three ohm resistor. Everybody okay with that? All right, nobody's saying no, so I'm gonna assume you're okay with it. That current is flowing from the left to the right through the three ohm resistor, which means it is flowing from node A to node B through the three ohm resistor. So our equation for IZ is really just this part of our first KCL equation. All right, so once we know what our nodal voltages are, we could then solve for any current in our system at all, just using um, Ohm's law. So IZ is VA minus VB over three ohms, which I get to be 4.8 amps. What if we wanted to figure out what the current flowing through the eight ohm resistor is? What would we do? Uh, let's say through the eight ohm resistor direction up. So if I were looking for this guy, I'm gonna call it I X. How would I solve for that? So it will be negative VA over eight because it's starting at zero. So we would have zero minus VA divided by eight ohms. Um, for the sake of argument here, let's call this current IY. How would we solve for that guy? positive VB over four, absolutely. So we can use Ohm's law to solve for any current in our system that we don't know. And then we can use the combination. Now that we know all of our nodal voltages and all of our currents, we can then solve for powers and stuff like that, right? Um, so let's work another example problem using these exact same steps, but now I'm going to introduce in a dependent source, okay? It's gonna, change things by one step. Oh, and I forgot to write step six down, which was solve the equations. So let's look at following circuit. We have a 10 ohm resistor here. A 5 ohm resistor here. Two amp source here. A 20 ohm resistor here. dependent source carrying a current of 0 0.5 VX. So this is a voltage controlled current source. I'm gonna tie all of these guys together here at the bottom. And I'm gonna place a resistor here at the top. Let's call it a 15 ohm resistor. And I'm gonna say that my voltage VX is positive polarity on the right, negative polarity on the left, like so. So our first step 
is going to be as before identify our notes this will be one node this will be a node This will be a node. And this will be a node. Everybody okay with that? Step two is to choose or select the reference node. So somebody in class tell me which node they want to be the reference, okay? All of our nodes are connected to exactly three elements, so all of them are as equally as valid to be a reference node as any of the others. So just tell me what color you want me to choose as a reference and we'll work from there. The orange. What about bullet? Um, so the orange one at the bottom is kind of an obvious choice. Let's do the blue one just for the sake of argument. It doesn't make anything any more difficult in any way, shape, or form. It's just different. So I'm going to do that one. So step three will be to, let's see what's going on in the chat here. Oh, sorry. Um, step three will be to assign nodal voltages. Um, so I'm going to call the red node, node A, the green node, node B, and the orange node down here node C, where my blue node has already been assigned a nodal voltage of zero volts, which has been indicated by that ground symbol. So, step four is to write KCL equations at each non-reference node. So let's start with node A. I'm going to indicate what the currents that I'm looking for are. Um, so let's use this color. So there's going to be a current that's flowing up, a current that's flowing to the right, and a current that's flowing down. So somebody tell me how I'm going to express the current flowing up through the 15 ohm resistor in terms of my nodal voltages. Would it be VX minus VA over 15? Because it's flowing to the negative side. Okay, so VX isn't a nodal voltage, so it shouldn't show up in my nodal analysis or in my KCL equations. So VX is defined as the voltage drop over that 15 ohm resistor. Um, I see somebody in chat saying negative 15 volts over 8 ohms. Um, negative VA over 8 ohms. I'm not sure where that came from either because I don't see an 8 ohm resistor. VA over 15. Okay, 
So the correct answer is VA divided by 15 volts. So let me explain where this came from yet again. We're looking for the current that's flowing up through the 15 ohm resistor. That current starts at node A and it ends at ground. So we have VA minus zero, which is just VA divided by 15 ohms. What about the current flowing to the right through the five ohm resistor? VA minus VB over five ohms. That is correct. VA minus VB over five ohms. And finally, the current flowing down through the 10 ohm resistor. VA minus VC over 10 ohms. VA minus VC over 10 ohms. Set all of these equal to zero. All right. Let's do this over here for now. So now we're going to do KCL at node B. So we're going to be looking for this current flowing to the right. This current flowing down, or excuse me, uh, the current flowing to the left, the current flowing down, and the current flowing to the right, all in purple. So somebody else tell me what the current flowing to the left through the 5 ohm resistor is. Uh, VB minus VA over 5 ohms. VB minus VA over 5 ohms is absolutely correct. What is the current flowing down through the 2 amp source? Is it negative 2? That's absolutely correct. Negative 2 ohms. There's going to be negative 2 amps. And what is the current flowing to the right? through the 20 ohm resistor? Uh, VB over 20. VB over 20 ohms. Absolutely correct. And we set those guys equal to zero. Lastly, we do KCL at node C. Let me scroll up here and we will say, I'll do it from gray, I guess. We're looking for the current flowing up through the 10 ohm resistor, the current flowing up through our two amp source and the current flowing up through our dependent source. We add all those guys together. So what is the current flowing up through the 10 ohm resistor in terms of our nodal voltages? Uh, VC minus VA over 10 ohms. That is correct. VC minus VA over 10 ohms. All right. Um, what is the current flowing up through the 2 amp source? Two amps. Two amps, right? Positive two amps. So that gray arrow is in the same direction as the arrow of the current source. So that's why it's just two amps. Uh, lastly, we have the current flowing up through the dependent source. So the arrows are in opposite directions. So it will be negative 0 0.5 VX. Zero. All right, and so now we're gonna have a, a new fifth step, all right? Which is to write equations for what I'm gonna call 
controlling variables. in terms of the nodal voltages. So this is a lot of words. What I mean explicitly here is we are trying to define Vx, our controlling variable, in terms of our nodal voltages, okay? So how we are going to do this is we say that the voltage Vx is the voltage present at the positive polarity terminal. So I'm going to call this guy an other equation here. So Vx is equal to the voltage present at the positive polarity terminal, which is ground, minus the voltage present at the negative polarity terminal, which is Va. So from this, we can say that Vx is equal to simply negative Va, and then we could substitute it into this third equation, KCL at node C. So that is what I meant by write equations for controlling variables in terms of our nodal voltages. If our controlling variable were a current, we would have a no, an Ohm's law equation effectively, where we'd have the difference in nodal voltages divided by some resistor value, but it's all basically the same. So I want to be super clear about one thing because this is an error that I see uh, an awful lot among students, all right? You might be inclined, let me do this in a different color to look at this guy and come up with some equation like zero minus VC is equal to 0 0.5 VX. This equation is incorrect for two reasons, okay? The first reason it's incorrect is because 0 0.5 VX is the current that's being supplied. So the difference in voltage cannot equal a current because that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The other reason it's not the equation that I'm looking for here is because it's not defining the controlling variable. It's just telling us what's going on with the source. So for this particular step, I'm always looking to write my controlling variable Vx as uh, looking at it as the voltage drop over a particular circuit element and not as part of a dependent source. And this will be a little bit more um, elaborated on as we work more examples. You'll, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm meaning. But we're looking for another relationship involving Vx where our first relationship absolutely had something to do with it being part of a current source. Our other equation has to do with how it's defined in the circuit. Um, so from here, we organize our equations. So I'm going to do it down here so I can kind of see all of them at the same time. My coefficient for variable VA is going to be 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms times VA. My coefficient for VB is negative 1 over 5 ohms. My coefficient for VC is negative 1 over 10 ohms. And this is all going to be set to 0 because I don't have a constant term. For my second equation, I'm going to have a coefficient of negative 1 over 5 ohms times VA plus 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 20 ohms times VB plus 0 
VC, because there is no VC term in my second equation, is equal to two amps. And in my third equation, this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because we have that dependent source there. So I have a negative one over 10 ohms for my first term. And then I have a negative 0 0.5 times Vx, where Vx is negative Va. So that's gonna look like plus 0 0.5. And my units here explicitly need to be amps per volt um, because I have a voltage. This guy is multiplied by VA. I have no VB term, so that's zero times VB. And lastly, uh, or not lastly, but for my last variable, I have one over 10 ohms times VC. And this will be equal to negative two amps when I move the constant term to the other side of the equal sign. Step seven. is I solve the equations. So take a moment and solve for VA, VB, and VC, please. Has anyone been able to get an answer for any of the three variables? Uh, yeah, but I don't think it's right. What'd you get? Uh, for VA, I got a negative Point six five nine. All right. Negative zero point six five nine volts. Okay. What did you get for VB? Seven point four seven volts. Seven point four seven two volts. By the way, I know what that that two comes next because I got the exact same answer. So at least I believe you're correct right now. Uh, go ahead and tell me what you got for VC. <clears throat> uh, negative 17.363 volts. Negative 17.363 volts. I got that as well. Did anybody else get those same that I and the gentleman who was talking out loud might have accidentally punch something in in their calculator incorrectly, okay? So that's why we I like to ask who else got the same answer and see if anybody got something different because the, the only problem with nodal analysis, I believe it to be pretty easy to implement and all that kind of stuff is that if you don't punch the system into your calculator right, then you can't get the correct answer. There's really no way to stumble into it. But um, I got these three numbers um, the gentleman who was speaking got these three numbers, and the last person to talk in chat, uh, Mr. Abshire, also got these three values. Uh, so I believe them to be correct. So our last step here, how would we determine what our voltage Vx is now that we know what these three nodal voltages are? Let's look back 
here and figure stuff out. So how does Vx relate to our nodal voltages? We already have an equation for this. We talked about it three minutes ago, right? Vx is the voltage present at the positive polarity terminal, which is zero, minus the voltage present at the negative polarity terminal, which is Va. So Vx is equal to negative Va. So in this case, that means Vx is positive 0 0.659 volts. All right, so um, the two example problems that we have worked to this point only had current sources in them, okay? So when we put voltage sources into a circuit that we want to solve using nodal analysis, that slightly messes with our little algorithm as well. So let me explain what I mean by that with Yet another problem. Uh, so let's say that I have the following circuit. It's going to look kind of similar to what we just did, but with slightly different configuration. Now I'm going to throw a voltage source here in the mix. And I'm going to put a dependent current source in here too. The dependent current source will have a value of twice Vx. The dependent voltage source will have a value of three times Vx. on earth just happened there. And I'm going to define Vx to be positive polarity on the left, negative polarity on the right. So I am intentionally going to choose our reference node on this particular problem to illustrate a couple of things. Uh, but first, I'm going to identify our nodes. clear here. Step one, identify nodes has been taken care of. Step two, choose reference node. Um, I'm going to choose the red node here. 
so I'm choosing a node where the ground node is not connected to my voltage source, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna have to talk about that a little bit. So it does not matter at all in a nodal analysis problem where we choose our ground node to be. We can put it at the place that has the most connections. We can put it at any place we feel like. It does not in any way, shape, or form change our analysis. The only part that matters is that when we get to step four, uh, I believe it's step four, where we are applying Kirchhoff's current law at all non-reference nodes that we never do KCL at our ground node and it's also going to mean that we never do KCL at what I'm going to call a super node, which is what I need to introduce in just a moment. Okay, so I'm choosing it at this particular uh, location to indicate something that we're going to talk about in just a moment. Step three is going to be assign our nodal voltages. Well, this green node in the middle, VA, the blue node on the right, VB, and the bottom node in orange, VC. Um, so step four is going to be new here, all right? Um, we're going to start by applying Kirchhoff's current law at our non-reference nodes and then see why it breaks, all right? So I'm gonna start by applying KCL at node A, which means that I'm gonna have this current directed to the left, this current directed down, and this current directed to the right. My current to the left, I think we can all agree, is going to be VA divided by three ohms. Is everybody okay with that? my current directed to the right through the 10 ohm resistor is going to be VA minus VB over 10 ohms. So the problem that I'm going to run into is now I need to define the current flowing down through my voltage source in terms of my nodal voltages, which is literally impossible, right? Our dependent voltage source here says that there is a potential difference of three VX across that voltage source, regardless of what current is flowing through it, okay? So I'm gonna call this guy for now, I dependent UD, meaning that it's flowing, uh, actually no, I'm gonna call it U dependent BT, or excuse me, TB, because it's flowing from top to bottom. And I'm just gonna have to put this guy in here as I dependent TB because I have no other way to describe it. I cannot describe it in terms of my nodal voltages. I'm going to skip a step here and I'm going to go to KCL at node C. Where I'm going to have this current flowing up 
this current flowing up and this current flowing up. So my leftmost current flowing up, the one flowing through the independent current source is obviously two amps. The one on the right flowing through the dependent current source is obviously two VX, but the one in the middle flowing through the dependent voltage source Again, I cannot describe it in terms of my nodal voltages. So I'm going to call this guy I dependent ET. So it's flowing from the bottom to the top. And set this equal to zero. And now what I'm about to do uh, may be slightly confusing to you guys. That's perfectly fine if it's confusing, as long as we understand logically why it works. So what I'm going to do um, is I can observe that in my KCL equation for node A, I have that current, which I can't define in terms of my nodal voltages flowing from the top BA to the bottom down uh, to BC. And in my KCL equation for node C, I have that exact same current, but it's flowing in the opposite direction, right? So realistically, those two contributions cancel each other out. So what I'm going to do to rectify this situation is I'm going to form what's called a supernova, all right? I'm going to erase all these guys. Oops, I didn't mean to erase that much though. that pink guy, that pink guy, this blue guy here, and these guys as well. All right. I'm going to form a super node by effectively just putting a circle around my voltage source. So my super node is actually, I'm going to treat it as if it were one node, but it contains nodes A and node C. And I'm going to apply KCL at my super node. So let's talk about what that means explicitly. KCL at supernode AC is simply me adding up all of the currents that are leaving my supernode. So that would be this current directed to the left, this current directed to the right, this current flowing up through the two amp source, and this current flowing up through the 2VX current source. The reason why I don't have to worry about the current flowing through the 3VX source is because it flows both from node A to node C and also from node C to node A. So when I add them together, they cancel each other out. So really what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I have this equation, which is equal to zero and this equation, which is equal to zero. And then I'm adding them together, which means I'm saying that zero plus zero is equal to zero. Does anybody have any mathematical reason why I can't do that? All right, so what I'm going to get then is starting with the current flowing through the three ohm resistor. So I'm gonna cancel these guys out. I'm gonna have VA over three ohms. I'm going to have VA minus VB over 10 ohms for the current flowing to the right through my 10 ohm resistor.
uh, for the current that's leaving my super node and flowing up through the two amp source, that is going to be plus two amps. And for the current flowing up through my dependent current source, that's going to be plus two VX. Set that equal to zero. So that's one equation, but it's being applied to two nodes. So if I went along here and I next applied KCL at all of my non-reference nodes, I would have two KCL equations in total. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this step six for now. Um, My non reference nodes. All right. ACL at node B. Uh, so if I apply Kirchhoff's current law here at node B, I'm going to be adding this current, this current, and this current, right? So my current flowing up is VB divided by 15 ohms. My current flowing to the left through the 10 ohm resistor is VB minus VA over 10 ohms. And my current flowing down through my 2VX dependent current source is going to be minus 2VX is equal to zero. So at present, I have two equations and three unknowns <laughs> so before when we had a dependent source we had a step where we had to um, write an equation for the controlling variables. So create controlling variable equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So you guys have been quiet for far too long. So somebody tell me what my controlling variable equation should be. Vx is equal to negative Vb. Vx is equal to negative Vb. All right. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, so if I'm being honest here, I think I shot myself in the foot on one thing that I'm trying to explain here by choosing um, that red node to be my ground. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because I currently have three equations, three unknowns, and I should be able to solve things. But what's going on with a 3VX source has been completely and utterly ignored. So um, instead of giving you a reason for why I'm going to solve for it, I'm just going to say that we need to, uh, because I do believe fundamentally that we need to. We're leaving information out of our circuit analysis. 
um, if we don't, but mathematically, I can't really figure out what's going on as to why we need it. Um, so I, like I said, shot myself in the foot here, could have fixed all this by choosing probably, it eh, doesn't matter. So the fifth step that I glossed over here, uh, because I thought I wouldn't have enough equations to solve this guy, and technically speaking, I won't ever be able to know what my voltage VC is um, without it, which is why I think we absolutely need it, is I need to write a voltage relationship equation for my voltage sources. Write voltage sick equation for each supernode, all right? So what that equation is going to look like, and I'm gonna give it down here as just a voltage relationship. Is my dependent voltage source here in the middle of the circuit gives me a voltage of 3Vx for sure, All right? So it's going to look like 3Vx and 3Vx will be equal to the voltage drop, uh, the nodal voltage at the positive polarity terminal, which is Va, uh, minus the voltage present at the negative polarity terminal, which is Vc. And this is the only equation in this particular circuit that allows me to determine what that voltage VC actually is, all right? Um, so that's why it's particularly important for this problem. Although if we were just trying to solve for VX or something like that, we wouldn't necessarily need it. But if we were trying to solve for um, any of the powers or anything like that, or potentially solving for the current through something. It may be uh, important. So anyway, um, after we come up with all of these equations, then we reach the point where we have to organize our equations. And then finally, solve our equations, all right, where we could express everything in terms of our nodal voltages, VA, VB, and VC now, and then solve for them. Um, so what that would look like, just for the sake of argument, is looking at my KCL equation for supernode AC. I'll have one over three ohms as a coefficient for VA plus one over 10 ohms um, plus, let's see, two VX is, where well, VX is only in terms of VB, so that's going to be fine there. So that's everything for VA. For VB, I have negative one over 10 ohms. Um, so. And then I have minus two. Amps per volt being multiplied by VB. Zero VC is equal to negative two amps. For my second KCL equation, I'm going to have negative 1 over 10 ohms times VA plus 1 over 15 ohms times VB plus 1 over 10 ohms times VB plus 2 amps per volt times VB is equal to zero. 
in my third equation, which I don't technically, well, I mean, I, I would need to solve for VC. Um, again, would tell me that VA minus VC is equal to three VX. So that means I'm gonna have a coefficient of one for VA. Uh, when I move three VX to the other side, so that's going to be minus 3VX, where VX is negative VB, so that's going to look like plus 3VB uh, plus negative 1VC is equal to 0. And now I can solve for those three voltages, which is as simple as putting that stuff into my calculator. Um, so. I'm slightly annoyed with myself that my example problem didn't work out exactly how I wanted it to, but that's okay. Um, so solving this guy is just throwing stuff into our calculator, which isn't particularly difficult. Um, so how about we do one last example problem uh, where I'm going to let you guys take the wheel. I'm going to make it a little bit easier than this one. Um, that will also reinforce that idea of a supernova, okay? So let's say that I have the following circuit. And I want to know the power supplied by the two amp source. All right. How could I solve this question using nodal analysis? So what's the first thing that I should do? You still got to identify your nodes, right? Absolutely. So first step, always identify my nodes. Thank you. So here's one node. Here's a second node. Here's a third node. Here is a fourth node. What's my next step? You choose your reference node. All right. So since you're the guy talking, which reference, uh, which node should I choose? Tell me what color. The orange. Orange. Orange at the bottom. All right. Makes sense. It's tied to an awful lot of things. So typically speaking, the more elements it's tied to, the easier it's going to make the analysis. Um, what is step three? You apply KCL to all the non-reference nodes. Uh, no. No. Okay. So step three. Nope. No problem. We we need to assign our nodal voltages, right? Because we don't know what any of our nodal voltages are. So I'm going to call this guy on the left in red, VA. This guy in blue, VB. And this guy over here, VC. All right. So we have a voltage source in this system, which means we are going to have a supernode, okay? Every voltage source will be part of a supernode. So for this particular one, let's put a circle around it like I did the last time. Our supernode is between node B 
and our reference node, all right? So because our super node contains our reference node, we do not have to write a KCL equation for this super node. Let me repeat that. Because our super node contains the reference node, we do not write a KCL equation. So instead, we would jump to the step where we write our voltage relationship equation, okay? So somebody tell me what our voltage relationship equation for this super node should be. Super node B comma G where G means ground. So our voltage relationship equations let me explain this again, are always the voltage drop across the voltage source that we're told, which is 7 volts, is equal to the, volt, uh, the nodal voltage at the positive polarity terminal, Vb, minus the nodal voltage at the negative polarity terminal, which is ground. So we have VB is equal to 7 volts as one of our equations for this system, okay? Now we would apply Kirchhoff's current law at our non-reference nodes. So that would be KCL at node A. give us something and then down here we would do KCL at node C. Give us something. So somebody tell me what my KCL equation for node A is going to be. Negative 4 amps plus VA minus VB over 5 ohms. Absolutely correct. Set that equal to zero, and we're done. Uh, somebody else tell me what my KCL equation for node C is. All right, I'm going to pick someone at random from the people that are supposedly here in Zoom. Chase Menendez, you need to tell me what the KCL equation at node C is. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't answer that, sir. All right. Christian Chatelaine, are you paying any attention at all today? Apparently not. Kevin Cobb. I'm not sure about the, would it be 2A or minus 2A and then uh, So let's start there. Uh, the negative two amps is absolutely correct. 
uh, because that two amps is entering node C and we're trying to find the current to the flowing out. So negative two amps is a great start. What's the next part you think it should be? Uh, would it be BC over uh, 20 ohms? BC over 20 ohms is also correct. Right, because it's um, the current flowing down through the 20 ohm resistor. So it starts at node C, so which is where we get the VC from. It ends at ground, which is zero. So VC minus zero is just VC divided by the resistor value. So you got one last part to knock this out of the park with. Uh, would it be VC over 10 ohms? Um, so it will not be VC over 10. Uh, the current starts at VC for sure, but it ends at VB. So it's VC minus VB over 10 ohms. And then we set this equal to zero. And we now have three equations. And I say that because I'm counting this guy right here as one equation. Then our two KCL equations, which will allow us to solve for all of our voltages, right? Our three voltages. But what we could do at this point is substitute in the fact that we know what VB is in order to solve for um, VA and VC, right? So for this particular problem, since we want the power supplied by the two amp source, we need to know the current flowing through the two amp source, which we absolutely do. And because we want the power supplied, we want the current flowing into the negative polarity terminal. So I would call this guy right here, VCS or V current source. And I could say that my nodal voltage VC is exactly the same as V current source. So once I know what VC is, which I can get by solving these three equations, I simply multiply that by two amps and I'm able to answer my question. Does that make sense to you guys? A simple power relationship from our very first thing. So let's go ahead and organize these equations and then solve that system, right? Um, so I'm going to leave this as three, excuse me, this should be one, two, and three. I'm going to leave this as three equations uh, just because I'm lazy in my left side calculator, even do simple substitutions like this, just so I don't make a silly mistake. Um, so my first equation would be zero VA plus one VB plus zero VC is equal to seven volts. My second equation is going to be one over five VA plus, I don't need that, just keep that. Negative one over five ohm VB plus zero VC is equal to four amps. My third equation is gonna be zero VA minus one over 10 ohms times VB plus one over 20 ohms plus one over 10 ohms VC is equal to positive two amps. So now I can solve these three equations. Will somebody tell me what my answer is for VA and VC are since I know VB better give me seven volts or I've made a terrible mistake. VA is 27 volts. Anybody else get that? Yes, sir. All right, and what did you get for VC?
31.33 volts. All right, 31.33 volts. Anybody else get that answer? Um, so I did not get that answer, um, but it's possible that I typed something into my calculator wrong. So let me try it again, just to be safe. I got 18 if you got 18. That's what I got is eight. Yeah. Uh, let me just punch it in again, again, just to cover our bases here. One, zero, one, sorry. Seven goes there, one fifth, negative one fifth, zero, four, and zero. I plugged in the wrong value for VB. Um, I plugged in 27 instead of seven, so that may be my whole problem. Let me try that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 18. All right, great. So let's that's that guy right there. But in go here, sorry. Uh, 18 volts. And so from this, our power supplied by our two amp source is then the voltage drop over the current source, which we know to be 18 volts, times the current flowing through the current source, which is two amps, is 36 watts. All right, um, so I've talked for the better part of an hour and a half plus. I would highly encourage you guys to take a crack at some of the problems from homework six, which were all based on nodal analysis and see if you're able to, to work them and get the correct answers. If anything isn't making sense when you're trying those homework problems, or if anything doesn't make sense to you right now and you want me to spend a few minutes answering questions, um, you know, let me know and we can devote a little bit of time on Thursday morning to answering questions or I'm happy to stay online here and answer questions regarding nodal analysis for anybody that, that has any. Um, our lecture is over. So if you, everything makes sense, by all means, you, know, you, can, you can drop out of Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for anybody with any questions about this stuff, please, please, please ask because nodal analysis is fundamental to doing well in this class. Is that gonna be for class five or six? Um, homework six is nodal analysis. So we skipped over um, superposition, uh, because it's another thing that, um, well, to put it bluntly, in most textbooks, superposition comes after nodal and mesh analysis. So that's why I'm doing superposition later. Superposition can be a very, very powerful tool, but we're actually not going to use it for quite some time. Um, so it didn't make sense to put off learning nodal and mesh, which is why I, I'm changing the order there. In fact, I would argue that the homework set for the superposition problems, literally only two of the homework problems does using superposition actually make any sense to be the correct or the most efficient analysis tool to use. Um, there's one problem in particular that has three different parts and only the first part makes any sense to do it by superposition at all. Uh, the other two parts of it involve, even if you're using superposition, setting up a system of equations. And if you're going to set up a system of equations to solve the circuit, you should just use nodal analysis or what we're going to learn on Thursday, 
mesh analysis. So uh, I might literally work that homework problem for you on next Monday when we cover superposition to show you when it is appropriate and when it isn't appropriate as a circuit analysis tool. Any other questions regarding anything remotely circuits related? Could you maybe uh, go over number one on homework three? Absolutely. Let me pull up what homework three is. All right, um, you said homework three, which problem? I'm sorry, I forgot already. Number one. <laughs> oh, I love this problem because you guys hate it so much. Uh, sorry. Um, I always get asked about this problem, it's great. So I'm gonna draw this guy. I am sure there are at least three or four other people, maybe not here on Zoom. Uh, but in the class that just have no clue what is going on with this problem. So it is a fantastic problem to ask questions on. Um, so we have this wackily drawn circuit. We have some resistor here, R1. And I'm going to leave everything in terms of just a uh, symbolic representation, so R1, R2, et cetera. And you can plug in numbers as it seems appropriate to you. Here's our resistor R2. This is our current source, IS. Here's our resistor R3. Here's a current source 0 0.5 VX. And here is our final resistor R4. And then we have these crazy loops. Where this guy has a current of I1 flowing through it. This guy has a current of I3 flowing through it. This guy has a current of I5 flowing through it. And then we have these loops on the bottom. Where we have a current I2, like so. And a current I4, like so. And the last bit of information that we are told here is that there is a voltage Vx. Uh, let me draw that minus sign in the other direction. Uh, there's a voltage drop Vx over this resistor R2. So one of the first things that we can do is redraw this circuit in a way that isn't utterly asinine, which is how I feel it's drawn uh, on the web. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is identify my nodes here. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways that we can approach this problem, um, but we're gonna do it strictly using effectively just Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law. Um, so if I'm identifying, I can say that
this is all one node. And this is all one node, meaning we have a single node pair circuit where everything is just connected in parallel. So I'm going to call the red node my top node and the blue node my bottom node and just redraw this thing in a way that looks less terrible. Okay. So here's my top. Here's my bottom. So between my top node and my bottom node, I have some resistor R1. Between my top node and my bottom node, I have some resistor R2. And I can see that the positive polarity terminal of that voltage Vx is associated with the top node. So I have plus Vx minus. Uh, between my top node and my bottom node, I have my current source. And the current is flowing from the bottom to the top. So that's why my arrow should be in this direction. Between the top and bottom nodes, I have my resistor R3. Uh, between the top and bottom nodes, I have my dependent current source. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure about that direction. So I'm just going to redraw that diamond there real quick. So my current is flowing from the red to the blue. So that's from top to bottom. So it should be in this direction. And then finally, between my top node and my bottom node, I have my resistor R4. So this is a simplified version of that hot mess of a loopy swoopy circuit that you were given. Are you okay with what I've done thus far? Yes, sir. All right. So before I go defining where I1, I2, I3, and I4, and I5 are in this circuit, we can actually analyze this guy and figure out what Vx is, which is the most important piece of information that we could be asked about here. Because this is a single node pair circuit, knowing our voltage across all of our elements makes finding everything else significantly easier. Okay, so I'm going to do KCL at my top node. Uh, right forward. So how can I express the current flowing down through resistor R1, and then R2, and then this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy, right? I'm just going to add all those guys together. How do I express the current flowing through resistor R1 in terms of that voltage Vx? Would it just be Vx over R1? Absolutely right. Vx over R1. What about the current flowing down through resistor R2? Vx over R2. Yep. Uh, what about the current flowing down through the independent current source? Negative Is. Yep. Current flowing down through resistor R3. Uh, Vx over R3. Uh, the current flowing down through the dependent current source. Positive 0.5 Vx. The current flowing down through the resistor R4. And Vx over R4. All right, so we have one equation and one unknown, so we can solve that guy for Vx, and we have made a great start. So now let's identify where those currents I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5 are in this guy. And so I'm going to take another step here. And I'm going to call 
this guy subnode one, two, three, four, and five. So let me explain what I'm doing here, all right? So node one is, or subnode one is attached to the bottom node and it is where resistor R1 and R2 are connected. So it would be representative of this portion. Oops, edit, undo, right here. So I'm gonna call this guy one. Two is on top and it is where resistor R2 and the head of the current source. So it's gonna be this guy right here. Three is gonna be on the bottom and it's where the tail of the current source and resistor R3 meet up. And four is gonna be on top where the tail of the dependent current source and resistor R3 meet up. And then finally five is where the head of the current source and resistor R4 meet up, okay? So, Now let's look at a couple of things here, all right? The current labeled I2 is flowing from three to one. So this is where I2 lives. Similarly, um, the current labeled I4 is flowing from five to three. So this is where I4 goes. Uh, the current I3 is flowing from four to two. Uh, the current flowing, uh, the current I5, we can think of it as flowing through the resistor R4 from five to four. So this guy right here is I5 and the resistor flowing, or excuse me, the current I1 is flowing from two through R1 to node one. So this guy right here would be representative of I1. So let me erase all these little blue lines that we did, our blue arrows that we used uh, a minute ago for determining the X. And now let's talk about how we could solve for these five different um, currents, okay? So let's start with I1 and I5 because they are the easiest ones, all right? I1 represents the current flowing down through resistor R. How can I express that in terms of the X? It'd just be VX over R1. Yeah, so VX over R1. We have one of our five currents taken care of, just like that. What about I5? So I5 is flowing from the bottom node to the top node through resistor R4. How do we express that one in terms of Vx? Vx over uh, R4. I5, so Vx over R4. Uh, so I disagree with you slightly here. And the reason why I say that is because the current is flowing into the negative polarity terminal for that voltage Vx. So I5 should be negative Vx over R4, right? We could just as easily say that Vx 
is the voltage drop over R4, positive polarity on top, negative polarity on bottom, because they're all in parallel, right? So the current's flowing into the negative polarity terminal, which is why we should have a negative sign in front of the X. Is that good? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so now we get to the things that are a little bit more difficult. So, let's look at I2. So, my argument is that this current I2 will be the same as the sum of this current flowing up through resistor R2 and this current flowing up through resistor R1 using Kirchhoff's current law, right? So the current going into that node, this node is the current flowing up through R2 and the current flowing up through R1. Are you okay with that sentence? All right, so we can use that to write our equation, okay? So I2 is gonna be equal to, so what's the current flowing up through resistor R2 in terms of the X? Would that be VX over the total resistance in parallel R1, R2? Uh, you're doing too much or work. Negative. Too hard. Uh. So we know the voltage drop over the resistor is Vx, negative Vx, and the resistor value itself is R2. So that's it, it's just Vx over R2. Then we're gonna have the current flowing through that resistor R1 from bottom to top is gonna look like negative Vx over R1. Add those two guys together and we have I2. Does that make sense? It's very similar to what we were just doing in our node analysis lecture. Could just you like, not just add those, add R1 and R2 in parallel and then do Vx over that? Or would that not work? Um, so you're saying treat it as an equivalent resistance. Okay, yeah, so that would absolutely work, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, since we know that the current's gonna be the same flowing, the I2 is going to be the same current flowing through R1 and R2. So yep. you could just find the REQ for that and then do VX over the REQ right there. Yes, so you could absolutely do that. So what that would look like is, let's see. Um, negative VX multiplied by one over R1 plus one over R2, which is literally the exact same thing that I have written just with the VX distributed. So your, your inclination of combining those resistances is absolutely um, a, a reasonable way to approach that particular part of the circuit. All right, let's look at um, I4, okay? So now we're gonna look at a slightly different application of Kirchhoff's current law. So I would say that this current flowing down plus this current is equal to I4, right? So the currents flowing into that node that I've circled in green have to equal the current leaving the node I've circled in green, which is I4. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah. All right. So we could say that I4 is gonna be um, the current flowing down through the dependent source, which we know to be 0 0.5 Vx, plus the current flowing down through the resistor R4, which is just Vx, that's I4. So our last one is I3.
And so here we get to make a choice um, whether we want to do So let me do this one in blue. So here's I3. So you could say that it's going to be this current plus this current plus this current, because those are the currents that are leaving that node. Or It's going to be this current plus this current plus this current. Either one of them is perfectly valid. So I'm going to write the one um, where everything is leaving because I don't have as many negative signs to accidentally make a mistake on, right? So for I3, I could say that it is the current flowing down through the current source, which is negative IS, plus the current flowing down through resistor R2, which is VX over R2 which is just Vx over R1. And that allows me to calculate I3. And so now I have expressions for all five of those loopy swoopy currents in terms of that one voltage Vx, which is why I believe Vx is the most important quantity we can solve for. Um, so did any of those analysis steps uh, not make sense? Or does anything need further clarification? I think everything's good. All right. Any other homework questions or anything like that I can answer or help on? I don't think so. All righty. Well, I'll see you guys on uh, Thursday morning. Um, have a good rest of your day and all that kind of good stuff. All right. See you.